We have our motor, our MOSFET, a power source, a breadboard, and an Arduino. DC motor, all I've done is soldered two green wires onto the end. So I'm gonna add some tape to the motor just so we can actually see it spinning here. This is just regular old electrical tape. This is our MOSFET. It's similar to a transistor. It has a source pin on the left where the current enters, a gate pin in the middle. This acts as a switch turning on or off the current flow. And on the right is our drain pin. So where the current exits or drains off. These are nine volt battery connections. Solder the ends a bit just so we can actually stick them into a breadboard. Connected lines that we can plug into. So there are five input connections on the top here, then a gap, then five inputs connected on the bottom here. Our connections now, so the black negative wire of the 9 volt battery connects to the source of the MOSFET, and that's where the current's going to enter. Now keep in mind that current flows out of the negative lead of the battery, and then goes back into the positive, so it's counterintuitive to what we're used to, but current is actually, and electrons are actually going leaving the battery on the negative terminal first. That's why they enter the source. So this also connects to ground of our Arduino with the white wire. The middle pin of the MOSFET, recall, is the gate. So the gate is our switch pin, turning on or off the current. When we feed it a 5 volt high, it'll allow current to pass through the MOSFET. And it's also connected to digital PWM pin 9, which is our pulse with modulation. And this allows us to vary the duty cycle we're actually putting out from 0 to 100% output. So the right pin of the MOSFET is the drain. This is where the current exits, and we're going to have the current exit into our DC motor using the green wire. Next, up top, we have the other side of the DC motor, another green wire. This is connected to the positive wire of the 9 volt battery. Because we are going to power the Arduino using the battery, the same battery, then we're also going to connect the 9 volt battery to the VN pin on the Arduino using the second red wire coming out of the screen seen here. So that's just going to go into our VN pin and provide power to the Arduino. So I'm going to go through my code in a second, but if you're just looking for a basic turn on or off command, this is all the code you need right here for PWM pin 9. All right, so let's take a look at the code now. We're gonna to wanna to add a couple integers here. So the first integer is gonna be for the motor and we're gonna set that on PWM pin nine. Next, we're gonna make an integer for X and just set it to zero for now. Now we'll need to look inside the loop and we're gonna make a while statement. So a while statement has a simple condition which we're gonna set as X less than 255 which is the maximum output for the PWM pin. So all we're gonna do in this loop is every time it cycles, we're gonna set X to itself plus 15. So each time X will increase by 15, then we're gonna make an analog write command to the motor and feed that to variable X, which will be an integer. Now then we're gonna delay by one second or 1000 milliseconds, make another analog write command, even though we are in a digital pin, but we're gonna set the motor, so pin nine to zero, so we're gonna turn off the PWM pin and set it to zero volts. Then we're gonna delay by one second again, and this whole loop will repeat itself a few times, so 17 times in total. So the loop will cycle, and every time X is less than 255, it's gonna increase X by 15 and run through the same process. Then we're also going to want to look at what X is in the serial port. So we're going to add a serial.println command so we can see the variable X. And println, uh, recall, just adds a new line every time in the output. And then because we're doing that, we're going to need to initialize our serial port. So we need a serial.begin command. And we're going to set that speed to 9600 for the baud rate, which is pretty slow, but it should be good for our purposes here. So then we're going to verify the code and we're going to upload the code to the Arduino and see what it actually does.
tried to keep this example as basic as possible, including we've omitted the flyback diode that you usually put across the motor. So the flyback diode allows current to only flow in one direction. And that helps reduce any sparking that might occur as you turn on or off the switch. Now for this case, we've kept it basic, so we've not used that, and it still should work for most MOSFET applications with a low power DC motor. So thanks again, have an excellent day.